What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Today I'm going to do the second video in the liquid cooled Peltier fridge series and in this installment I'm going to build the box and insulate it. This is not going to be a step-by-step -step video. Uh, it is just going to show you what I did and how I did it a little bit and and then we'll get to the third installment which will be testing it. Okay, to start with, uh, I'm just gonna build the box. Now, that's not the point of this video. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. I'm not gonna do a step-by-step -step on building this box. You can build it to whatever size with whatever you've got laying around. That part doesn't really matter. I'm gonna concentrate a little bit more about the insulation and the actual, the connection of the, the Peltier cooling unit to this. So I'm just showing you what I've got. I've just got some three quarter inch uh, cabinet grade plywood that I had left over from another project in a few different sizes. So I'm gonna piece something together and just build a basic little cabinet with a, with a door that hopefully I can find some sort of a latch that, uh, that will close this and keep it pretty much airtight. I'm gonna silicone seal the, the edges so that uh, it's as airtight as possible. And then, like I said, I'm gonna skip forward to the insulation part and the connection of the, the actual cooling unit. Again, keep in mind this is an experiment. I'm not building this to uh, have a permanent refrigerator that I'm gonna use all the time. This is mainly to see if I can prove the concept. If I can, then I may decide to go into production and make, uh, make these and sell them. But, uh, but first, you gotta start small scale and and prove the concept. So this is a prototype. And what I've got here, I'm about halfway done building this and I'll show you what I'm working with here. But I'm using, uh, at the risk of getting criticized for the insulation that I'm using, I'm gonna use this poly iso uh, foam board that uh, is used in home construction again. But I'm gonna use a double layer this time. I'm also going to spend more time uh, making this uh, more airtight than before although you will see that I have a couple notches where I had to put the uh, you know you have to put the uh, apparatus the cooling apparatus in there before you attach the top so the top is going to be attached with screws everything else is glued and, and nailed in place permanently and is very airtight the only uh, possible place that this thing's going to leak is is here and maybe on the front door edges although um, you know, any, anywhere that's going to leak in a refrigerator, the top is probably the best, best place to leak because the cool air is going to stay on the bottom. So I'm going to do what I can to make this as airtight as possible to, to, to make the experiment as valid as possible. But, but anyway, I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew this was an experiment and I understand that uh, I probably could squeeze out a few more degrees if I uh, use better materials and uh, spent more time working on this. Okay, here it is. Um, it's the next day because I had so much gluing and um, fastening together um, that it, it took quite a bit longer than I, want, than I anticipated, I guess. But uh, here's the finished product. Um, again, this is all made with scrap. Uh, I really didn't buy anything for this project except uh, these little these little clasps on the side. Uh, I learned that last time in the last video. If you watched that one, I didn't really have a great way to attach the door. On normal fridges, they have magnetic, uh, you know, they're, they're powered by magnets to hold the door closed and I didn't have that ability. So I use those, um, put uh, some, these grooves in the back to let the, uh, the hoses through. But as you can see, it's, close to airtight, it's, it's insulated. I use double walls of the insulation as I talked about. Um, and this is just hanging there. Um, obviously, you know, if this were to make it to some sort of production or if I were selling this to people or whatever, I would, it would look a lot prettier and have everything tidily mounted and so forth. But for these testing purposes, don't really care. But um, it is really strongly constructed, unlike the last one. And I've got these, uh, got some hinges on the door. Once again, the top part is uh, attached by screws so that uh, if I had to, I could remove the top, just this, this top piece so that I could remove the cooling apparatus. 
So let me open this up and show you the inside. So as you can see, it's double insulated uh, with a, this is obviously really roughly cut by the way, but uh, that's okay. Again, it's just for demonstration, uh, but it is double walled all the way around on every side. And I use some, some caulking material to caulk the, everything in here is caulked. Um, the door, I could probably use a little bit more uh, attention on there and I might get to that, but uh, <clears throat> anyway, and there you can see the, the cooling element, uh, the, the cooling side of the uh, liquid cooled Peltier setup is, is hanging inside here. So that pretty much concludes uh, you know, and, and these uh, these hinges do a really, or these clasps, or whatever these things are called, do a really good job of, of holding the door snugly closed, which was a problem on my last unit. And uh, so it's going to do a really, see, you know, there's, there's not pretty much any gap at all there. And uh, it's going to do a pretty good job. So the next step, the last video, we'll be testing this. Um, with uh, you know, I'll put a two liter or something in there, and then test the uh, the performance of this module, and I'll put my data logger in there so we can exa see exactly what temperature it is over time. Uh, look forward to that uh, third installment in the series later in the week. Thanks for watching, guys.